next topic is to look at the structure of the heart. And specifically, I want to look at the structure of the heart wall and the membranes that are around the heart. So to do this, I moved into the classroom because I want to draw you an awesome picture. Okay, it's not really awesome, but drawing is a really good way to see if you understand concepts and to really fix them in your mind. So I highly recommend that you draw the structures that we see in class, including this one. So when we're talking about the heart wall, the heart itself, the main part of the heart wall is called the myocardium. Myo for muscle and cardium referring to heart. So this is the actual heart muscle itself. So I'm going to make a fabulous drawing of a heart. There you have a great drawing of a heart. And the heart muscle or the myocardium is relatively thick. So I'm going to make it a little bit thicker. And some of the big blood vessels, just so it looks a little bit more like a real heart, less like a valentine. So again, this is the myocardium of the heart. It is made of cardiac muscle, as far as the tissue goes, and it also contains a lot of blood vessels. There are tons and tons of capillaries in here to make sure that we have a really good blood supply to the muscle of the heart itself. Now in addition to the muscle, we have a really smooth serous membrane that lines the inside of the heart and goes around the outside of the heart. A serous membrane is made up of a layer of simple squamous epithelium, that's one layer of flat cells, and it's held in place by a thin layer of areolar connective tissue. And this is going to be a really thin, really smooth layer. We call that membrane on the inside of the heart the endocardium. So I'm going to go ahead and add a layer of endocardium to my drawing. The endocardium, being very, very smooth, is important for a couple of reasons. It is going to allow the blood to move smoothly through the heart, and it also prevents clotting because there's nowhere for the platelets to stick. And this smooth layer on the inside of the heart is actually continuous with the smooth lining of the blood vessels. The serous layer on the outside of the heart is called the epicardium. Epi means over, so this is over the heart. So I'm going to put in a layer of epicardium around the outside. Together, the endocardium, the myocardium, and the epicardium make up the heart wall. But in addition to the heart wall itself, we also have some more membranes that are surrounding the heart. And the membranes around the heart are called the pericardium. And the pericardium has three layers to it. The innermost layer of the pericardium is the epicardium. And this is also called the visceral pericardium. So the epicardium and the visceral pericardium are the same. This layer of simple squamous epithelium held on the outside surface of the heart. Where it gets a little more interesting is that this epicardium actually sort of loops around and forms a second layer. This second 
layer of this serous membrane is called the parietal pericardium. In between the visceral pericardium and the parietal pericardium, there is a little space. And this space is called the pericardial cavity. And the pericardial cavity is filled with pericardial fluid. Now, this is really only a small, narrow cavity. It only has about 5 to 30 milliliters of fluid. That fluid is called the pericardial fluid, and it fills the space between the two layers of the serous part of the pericardium. The function of this part of the pericardium is to allow really smooth movement of the heart. Now as the heart beats away inside the layers of the pericardium, it can move really smoothly. So it's not going to rub, there's not going to be a lot of friction. So this is going to allow really smooth movement of the heart. However, this layer isn't very protective and it doesn't do much to hold the heart in place. So we do have a third layer that's called the fibrous pericardium. The fibrous pericardium is a thick layer of dense, irregular connective tissue around the outside of the heart. So I'm going to put that in in black. The function of this fibrous pericardium is threefold. One, it does provide some protection to the heart. It's really quite a, a strong material. It also prevents the heart from overstretching, so it keeps the heart from stretching too far. And the third thing, and one of the most important, is that it helps hold the heart in place in the middle of the chest. This fibrous pericardium connects up here to the big blood vessels on the top. Down at the bottom, it connects to the diaphragm and then it connects to the sternum in the front and to your vertebrae in the back. And in that way, the fibrous pericardium helps hold or suspend the heart there in the middle of your chest. The serous layer of the parietal pericardium here is actually connected to the fibrous pericardium. Then we have the pericardial cavity, and then we have the visceral layer of the pericardium that's really right on the heart surface. For some people, it's a little difficult to uh, visualize all these different layers of membrane. So I have a quick demonstration that might help some of you. Now, one of the things to remember is the heart doesn't go in the pericardial cavity. The heart is surrounded by the pericardial cavity. And to represent that, I have a plastic Ziploc bag. Inside this plastic Ziploc bag is a little bit of fluid, so I've colored it blue so it's easier to see. And this bag is representing the serous parts of the pericardium. So on the side facing you, this would be the parietal layer of the serous pericardium. And the side of the bag that's facing me is the visceral layer, or the layer that goes right on the heart. And then we have the cavity, which is the space inside the bag. And you can see the pericardial fluid inside the pericardial cavity. Now the way this works is I don't open up the bag and put the heart inside the bag. Instead, I wrap the bag around the heart. So the pericardial cavity and the membranes go around the heart like this. So that visceral layer that was facing me is right stuck to the surface of the heart and then we have the cavity with the fluid. So as the heart beats, it can move really smoothly along those membranes. To add the fibrous pericardium to this, the fibrous pericardium is attached directly to the outer part of this plastic bag. And so to demonstrate that, I just have a nice fibrous piece of paper that would wrap around the heart and connect to the blood vessels at the top and to the diaphragm underneath, and that's the way the pericardial membranes fit around the heart.